Merry Winter Wish. It was the winter holidays on the island of Sodor. All the engines were excited. That evening, Knapford Station was going to be decorated with lots of winter lights. There were to be red lights, green lights, sparkling lights, and even snowflake lights. Thomas chuffed into Brendam Docks. All the engines were huffing and puffing busily. Salty rolled over. He had some important news. The engines liked important news. A ship will arrive from the mainland. It'll deliver a special winter holiday light for Knapford Station. It will be the biggest light of all. The engines wished with wonder. What's the light called? It is called the Star of Knapford. It's a very special star. If an engine passes by it, they can make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, their wish will come true. The engines were very excited. They couldn't wait to see the Star of Knapford. Just then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, you must wait here. You will have a special to deliver. Yes, sir. Thomas's axles tingled and trembled. A special was best of all. Thomas watched and waited. Then, his special arrived. Shiver me timbers, Thomas! Look at that! Cranky lowered the Star of Napford gently onto a flatbed. The stars sparked and sparkled. It looked wonderful. Thomas, you will pull the star of Knapford to Knapford Station. Thomas was excited. He thought his pistons would pop. Bubbling boilers! I can't wait to tell my friends about my special. So Thomas buffered up to the star of Knapford. Then he chuffed cheerfully off to Knapford Station. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. The star of Knapford shimmered on his flatbed. Then Thomas saw Percy chuff across the bridge above. An idea popped in Thomas's pistons. I'm sure Percy would like to make a wish. Then maybe. Just maybe, Percy's wish will come true, just like Salty said. So Thomas didn't take the track to Napford Station. He puffed quickly to follow Percy. At last, Thomas was side by side with Percy. Percy, Percy, I have the star of Napford on my flatbed. Percy was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Are you taking the star to Knapford Station? Yes, Percy. After you have made a wish. So Thomas pulled the star alongside Percy. Percy looked at the star. Then he closed his eyes tight. I made a wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas very happy. Now I must hurry. Next, Thomas saw Henry chuffing cheerfully. I'm sure Henry would like to make a wish. So Thomas wished and whistled away to follow Henry. Thomas raced after Henry, all the way to Tidmiss Sheds. Henry saw the star of Knapford on Thomas's flatbed. His boiler bubbled brightly. Oh, Thomas! You're lucky. Are you taking the star to Knapford? Yes, Henry. After you have made a wish. So Henry closed his eyes. I made my wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas even more happy. Hooray! I hope all my friends' wishes will come true. Thomas chuffed on to Knapford Station. James puffed quickly past. I'm sure James would like to make a wish. So Thomas raced after James. 
Thomas chased James all the way up Gordon's Hill. Then there was trouble. Thomas rattled and raced down the hill. Stop, James! Thomas's flatbed jiggled and joggled. The star of Natford wiggled and wobbled. Thomas was worried. Cinders and ashes, this is fast! Thomas applied his brakes. His wheels squawked and squeaked. Sparks flickered and flashed. At last, Thomas screeched to a stop. The star of Knapford flew high into the sky. It floated and flickered right over James and Henry and Percy. Then crashed with a crunch and a crack onto the track in front of Thomas. Thomas gasped. The star is broken. Now my friend's wishes might not come true. And it's all my fault. Thomas was upset. How can I get the star to Knapford now? Sir Topham Hatt and the other engines will be waiting. Thomas decided to make a wish. Maybe, just maybe, my wish will come true. Thomas closed his eyes. I wish that one of my friends would come to help me. Suddenly, Percy, Henry, and James whooshed towards him. Thomas's wheels wobbled with wonder. We saw the star of Knapford fly high in the sky. Are you all right, Thomas? Thomas looked at his friends. Then he looked at the broken star. I have been a very silly engine. I wanted you all to make wishes, so I didn't go straight to Knapford. I puffed too far and too fast. Please, will you help me? Thomas's friends were happy to help. Percy watched the star. Henry fetched workmen to fix it. And Thomas and James found Rocky. They huffed him quickly to the star. Soon, the workmen had fixed the star. Rocky lifted it carefully back onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you all. Now we must hurry to Knapford. So, together, the engines wished and they whooshed across Soto. They arrived just in time. Everyone watched as Rocky put the star of Mapford high above the station. Then they clapped and cheered as the star was switched on. It shimmered and shone brightest of all. Thank you, Percy, Henry, Rocky, and James. I'm very lucky to have you all as friends. I'm sorry that your wishes didn't come true. Mine did. I wished that we'd all be together under the star of Knapford. So did I. So did I. Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. His friend's wishes had come true. And that made Thomas happiest of all. Charlie and Eddie. On the island of Sodor, all the engines are proud to work for Sir Topham Hatt's railway. They chuff and puff and heave and haul their hardest to make sure Sir Topham Hatt is proud of them. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt's car had broken down. Edward was to take the car to Marin Station. The mechanic was waiting there to fix it. Edward was proud to help Sir Topham Hatt. Just then, Charlie chuffed cheerily in. Good morning, Charlie. Hello, Edward. Do you want to hear a good joke? Where do crocodiles keep their money? I don't know. In a river bank. <laughs> but Edward didn't laugh. He didn't even smile. I have an important job to do. I have to take Sir Topham Hatt's car to Marin Station to be fixed. He needs it this evening. I must hurry. Charlie sighed. You know, Edward, maybe you're too old to be fun. 
Edward stopped. He didn't like being told that he was too old to be fun. He thought he was as much fun as any young engine. I can be a lot of fun, Charlie. Then show me. Edward huffed and puffed. He knew he should chuff carefully to Marin Station with Sir Topham Hatt's car. But he also knew Charlie wouldn't think that was fun. So, Edward decided not to take the careful track. Follow me, Charlie. I'll take you on the bumpiest and jumpiest, the twistiest and turniest tracks to Marin Station. Then you'll see just how much fun I can be. I'm ready, Eddie! So Edward puffed away to Marin Station, with Charlie chuffing close behind. First, Edward and Charlie clickety-clacked along the bumpiest tracks. They jiggled and joggled, and they bumped and they jumped. Wee hee hee This is fun! Next, Edward and Charlie rattled round some of the bendiest bends. Fizzling fireboxes! I didn't think you'd be this much fun, Edward! This made Edward happy. Edward and Charlie rocked and they rolled. They giggled and jiggled. And they told jokes. Okay, Charlie, I have a joke for you. How do you know when an engine is eating? Uh, I don't know, Eddie. Tell me. You hear it? Chewing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Eddie. You really are the most fun of all. At last, Edward and Charlie puffed into Marin Station. Thomas was there, but there was no mechanic on the platform. Hello, Edward. The mechanic was waiting for you. Now he's left on Bertie the bus. Suddenly, Edward was worried. Oh, my. I spent too much time on the bumpy and bendy tracks having fun. Charlie sighed. Is that as much fun as you could be, Edward? Edward didn't like that. No! I can be much more fun than that. We'll chase Bertie the bus to catch up with the mechanic. Good idea! I'm ready, Eddie! So, Edward and Charlie pumped their pistons and chuffed off for the chase. Edward and Charlie raced and chased after Bertie the bus. They thundered through crossings. They flew over bridges. And they clattered through tunnels. But Edward and Charlie couldn't catch up with Bertie. Flat my funnel! That was fun! Now, Edward was even more worried. He had not done his job. Sir Topham Hatt would be cross. I think we should stop at the next junction. Then we can ask the signal man to send a message to the mechanic. I was right. You are too old to be fun. Edward didn't like that. Then an idea flew into his funnel. We'll take Sir Topham Hatt's car to the steamworks to be fixed. It's always fun there. Charlie was surprised. Bubbling boilers, Edward! That will be the most fun of all! I'm ready, Eddie! So, Charlie and Edward puffed off to the steamworks. Charlie and Edward steamed in. Hello, Kevin. Where's Victor? Hello, Edward. Victor has gone to pick up a part. Can I help? I'd like you to fix Sir Topham Hatt's car. Kevin was surprised. Sling my hook. We don't fix cars. I'm sure you can. We will be back later to pick up the car. Edward, you're not too old to have fun. You're the most fun of all. That made Edward very happy. Later, Charlie and Edward returned. Kevin was very excited. Here you are, Edward. 
Kevin trundled to one side. He giggled giddily. <laughs> there was Sir Topham Hatt's car with a funnel on its roof. It's a fun funnel! Edward gasped. Just then, Sir Topham had arrived. He didn't think the funnel was fun at all. Edward, what have you done to my car? Edward felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to be really useful and really fun. But it has all gone wrong. This is a disaster. I wish I had just been really useful. So do I, Edward. Please, sir. I can take you and Lady Hat this evening. Then, tomorrow morning, your car will be fixed. Very well, Edward. Edward had puffed into Knapford Station with Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Charlie was there. Hello, Eddie. I'm ready for more fun. Not now, Charlie. It's not the time for fun. It's the time to be really useful. I have to hurry to the steamworks. Edward puffed into the steamworks. Charlie chuffed close behind. Would you like to hear another joke, Edward? No, thank you, Charlie. This isn't the time for jokes. I have to collect Sir Topham Hatt's car. Kevin, please take the funnel off Sir Topham Hatt's car. It was fun, but it wasn't really useful. Right, boss. Uh, Edward, whatever you say. Thank you, Kevin. Later, Edward puffed out of the steamworks with Sir Topham Hatt's car. It was as good as new and funnel free. All along the track, as Edward clickety-clacked, children whistled and waved. This is fun. And Charlie had to agree. Thomas's crazy day. The engines on the island of Sodor always like to be busy. They like to be really useful. And they like to have fun. One morning, Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the steamworks. He had come to see his best friend, Percy. Percy had popped a piston. Hello, Percy. Hello, Thomas. Thomas could see his friend look sad. Cheer up, Percy. Victor will soon have you fixed. But I can't be really useful here. And if I'm not really useful, I can't have fun. Percy, my friend. No more long faces, please. You look like a squeezed lemon on wheels. I will have you fixed by lunchtime. That made Percy smile. Don't worry, Percy. I'll puff back for you. And we can play then. So Thomas clickety-clacked off on the track to see Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for Thomas at Knapford Station. So were Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand, the Misty Island engines. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand giggled and jiggled. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello, Thomas. Thomas. We're happy to see you. That's right. <clears throat> and I, Thomas, have a very important job for you. Thomas puffed with pride. Yes, sir. I want you to work with Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand at Brendam Docks. There is important freight to be loaded by the end of the day. You must show them how to be really useful engines. Of course, sir. Lead the way. We're right behind you, Thomas. That's right. But Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzed. Oh my. I told Percy I would play with him. And I don't want to disappoint Percy. But if I play with Percy, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand will think I'm not a really useful engine. 
Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can play with Percy and I can show Bash, Dash and Ferdinand how to be really useful. I'm sure I can do that. That made Thomas's boiler bubble brightly. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand whistled and whooped. They had never seen anything as exciting as this. There are so many ships, so many tracks. That's right. Who's oh, he? This is Cranky. Cranky creaked crossly. He's a crane. That's right. Then an idea popped into Thomas's pistons. Cranky, this is Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand from Misty Island. Please tell them about the docks. I have to chuff away. I will be back very soon. And before Cranky could creak again, Thomas had steamed out of the docks. Percy was waiting for Thomas outside the steamworks. Hello, Percy. Let's play hide and seek. Your turn to hide. Percy's firebox fizzed. He liked playing hide and seek with Thomas. Make sure you find a good hiding place. Don't peep until I find you. Then Thomas raced away to the docks. Cranky was cranky. Hello, Thomas. Cranky doesn't want to talk at all. That's right. It's not my job to talk to engines. Now Thomas was cross. Cranky, you know all about loading freight. Please help Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand. I must do something important. Then I will puff back. Cranky didn't like being told what to do. He creaked and he cranked. But Thomas had already whooshed away. Thomas whirred and wished. Must find Percy, must have fun, must load freight till the job's well done. Thomas was too busy worrying and wishing to see Percy. Percy was hiding. Percy was trying not to peep. Can't find Percy, must go back. Must make sure the freight's on track. So Thomas raced and rattled back to the docks, where Thomas could not believe his eyes. Cranky was lowering Ferdinand onto the deck of a mighty steamship. Ferdinand wasn't happy. This is not right. Thomas was upset. Cranky, what are you doing? Cranky crackled. You said, help them. Load freight. Thomas was horrified. I didn't mean load engines. Maybe not. You weren't here to ask. Thomas felt terrible. Unload Ferdinand now, please. Then Thomas felt worse. Cinders and ashes. Percy won't be having fun at all. And Thomas wished like the wind out of the docks. Thomas clickety-clacked past Percy's track. Percy! Percy! Where are you? Percy was sad. I'm here, Thomas. You didn't try to find me. You didn't play. This is no fun at all. Now Thomas felt worse than ever. The freight wasn't loaded. Bash Dash and Ferdinand would think he wasn't really useful. And worst of all, Thomas had upset his best friend, Percy. I can't do two things at the same time. Percy was puzzled. What do you mean, Thomas? Thomas thought, and he thought. Then, a much better idea flew into his funnel. Percy, we're gonna have fun at the same time as being really useful. Follow me. Thomas and Percy puffed into the docks. 
Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand were waiting. We can show you that really useful engines are really fun ones. Thomas and Percy huffed and puffed. First you watch, and then you wait. Then you hold your car so straight. Never hurry, take your time. One by one, you'll have a line. Then you know you've done your best. You've passed the really useful test. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try our best. We'll have a bash. <laughs> we'll take our time. We'll never dash. <laughs> we'll huff and puff with all our might. Hooray for you. You've done it right. <laughs> that was fun, Thomas. That's right. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Being really useful is the most fun of all. And even Cranky had to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs>